Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about maintaining your desired lifestyle by aging in place is Terry Lemire. Terry has been a practicing occupational therapist for 25 years. She founded Healthy Home Living Solutions LLC in 2021 and offers home safety assessments, aging in place solutions, and client and caregiver education on safe strategies and fall prevention. She also became a certified aging in place specialist in 2020. How are you doing today, Terry? I'm doing great, how are you? Very good, thank you. I'm looking forward to our conversation, but before we get started, for those that are joining us for the live webinar, if you have any questions, I encourage you to type your questions into the control panel you'll see on your right-hand side. Time permitting, we will do everything in our power to get your questions answered. Also, in the handout section in that same panel, Terry was gracious enough to send some resource, to, give, to provide some resources. So please go ahead and download those, and she'll go ahead and make mention of those later in the presentation but those are for you. So Terry, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, great. Thank you everybody for being here today and for giving me the opportunity to present to you a really important topic for all of us, uh, and that is maintaining your desired lifestyle by aging in place. All of us are aging every single day. Um, and so this is a topic, even though, even if you're, uh, in your 20s, you know, it's something to think about as you get older. It's also something to think about uh, for your aging loved ones. Um, many times we uh, live in our homes for years and we don't really see that certain things may be unsafe for us and could cause falls. So that's what we're going to discuss today. The first thing is many of you are here because you probably have an idea of what aging in place is. The CDC defines aging in place as the ability to live in one's own home and community safely, independently, and comfortably regardless of age, income, or ability level. Um, and the way that I look at aging in place is that you have the ability to stay in your own home while you are doing everything you can to prevent falls in and around your home. Um, and basically you're thriving and that's the goal. So there are some important elements of aging in place successfully. Um, we all wanna age as successfully as possible. Um, and so uh, there, this little Venn diagram uh, talks about the three main components that go into aging in place successfully. And if you do it successfully, the center is remaining at home, which is really something that all of us would like to do, or most of us would like to do. Um, so that would be the person, the place, and the support network. Today we're going to talk a lot about the place, but um, I wanted to also touch on the person and support network. So when you are striving to age successfully, uh, you want to look at the person. So you look at everything that encompasses the person, their finances, their activities of daily living, their preventative health care, their medical care, their spirituality, self-worth, and recreation. Um, then the support network, the community involvement, Continuing education is always a great thing to empower yourself. Transportation is an issue for some people. Um, and then also just family, friends, and community. It all comes together uh, to help you age in place and to age successfully. But today we're gonna talk mostly about the place, and that would be your residence of choice. Most people, uh, according to statistics, would prefer to stay in their own homes as they get older. Some people are open to uh, moving into a in, uh, senior care community, um, and that's great too, and that's uh, considered their home as well. Um, one thing that goes into aging in place is home modification, and that's what we'll be discussing today. And the community environment is really important too. So all of that plays into aging in place. So let's talk about the benefits of aging in place. And I think a lot of us probably kind of already know, you know, the benefits of being able to stay in your own home and age in place. But one of the first ones 
or one of the best ones in my opinion is that you have greater independence you get to live life on your own terms when you're home you get to do what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it um, if you're in a uh, facility or a community sometimes you have to follow the rules and eat what they give you and things like that. So greater independence is one benefit of staying home and being able to stay at home. Healthier and safer living environment. You control who comes into your home and safe hygiene measures in this era of COVID. So uh, unfortunately, we all heard horror stories during the pandemic of many, many people in uh, long-term care facilities or assisted living facilities uh, that got COVID because of the close vicinity of um, other residents and of healthcare workers. So as we all know, when you're in your own home, you can, um, you know, have kind of a gateway of who gets to come into your house and how they um, act in your home as far as uh, using universal precautions. Greater comfort. Home is where the heart is. Um, even when you go on a great vacation, on a luxurious vacation, you come home and there's just no place like home. Um, so obviously many of us wanna stay home because that's just our comfort zone. It's easier to stay close to family and friends when you're able to stay home. Uh, as we all know, it's extremely important to have a support network. Um, just like I always say with raising kids, it takes a village. And I feel like it also takes a village to take care of our older loved ones. Um, so it's really, really nice when an older loved one can stay home in their community that they've been in maybe for years and years. They have neighbors that they can count on, their church that they can uh, access and things like that. So that's another benefit of aging in place. And then the uh, last one I wanted to talk about is convenience and cost savings. It's more cost effective to modify your home and pay for assistance if you need it than to live in an assisted living or a nursing home. And of course, being at home is just more convenient. So let's talk a little bit about cost comparisons. Um, so I got these stats uh, that are relevant to the average cost per year in Maryland, which is the state that I'm in. Um, always take into consideration that every location, every different location is going to vary as far as cost of living and the pricing. In Maryland, um, I think they're kind of right in the middle um, as far as uh, prices for nursing home, assisted living, and home paid caregivers. So as you can see here, if you were to need a nursing home long-term care um, service, then it, the average is $126,000 per year. Uh, but keep in mind that this is 24-hour care uh, they have, uh, you know, activities that you can do in the facility, but um, you're getting nursing care 24-7 if you need it. Um, then if you look at assisted living, um, that would be between $45,000 and $75,000 per year. And that just depends on all of the options that the assisted living facility offers. Uh, it also depends on the level of care that you need. So, for example, our folks with uh, dementia uh, may need extra care called memory care, uh, and that costs at least $1,000 more per month at an assisted living community in Maryland. Um, and then uh, home paid caregivers. So let's say you decided that you wanted to stay home uh, and that you are able to stay home, but you would like a little extra assistance with your self-care, getting dressed, getting bathed. Uh, maybe you need some assistance with someone cooking your meals, helping you take your medicines. Um, so home paid caregivers in the Maryland area average $24 per hour, which you know is, is up there too. Um, 
if you were to look at a home paid caregiver for eight hours a day, seven days a week, that would be $70,000 per year just for the home paid caregiver. But that's quite a lot of care. Um, many of uh, my folks need, you know, maybe half days, a uh, few days a week, just to kind of help them be able to do their daily activities and, and do uh, the higher level activities in their homes. But the benefit of that is that you are at home. So that's, you really want to take, you want to weigh the, the benefits, the pros and cons of each of these situations. Also, I've, I do want to stress that um, many people don't realize that if you have Medicare, if you're on Medicare, Medicare does not cover nursing home care or assisted living care or actually home paid caregivers. Um, now, nursing home, if you go to a nursing home just for rehab, Medicare will cover a portion of that. But if you're going to live there long term, they will not. So that money is going to come, unfortunately, out of your savings and um, what you have saved all your life. Um, same thing with assisted living. And I'll talk a little bit about some potential funding sources for all of these. So on average, homeowners can spend $3,000 to $15,000 to modify their home to age in place. And this is another thing that really, really varies. It just depends on what you need. Some people need just some durable medical equipment, some grab bars. Um, and then some people may need uh, like a stair glide or a ramp or uh, changing out their tub into a walk-in shower. So it just depends, and it depends on the cost of living in your area. So what if you don't plan to age in place? What if you just hope that, uh, that everything will go well and, and um, that you'll be one of the lucky ones, which you know we all hope, um, but here are some statistics. One in four Americans, age 65 and over, falls each year. Falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries for older Americans. And most of those falls are at home, actually. Falls threaten seniors' safety and independence. We all know that older loved one who had a fall, broke a hip, and then they ended up never being able to return back to their home. So we really, really wanna try as hard as we can to be proactive and to prevent these falls instead of being reactive and trying to figure out what we're gonna do after the fall. But there is hope through practical lifestyle adjustments, evidence-based falls prevention programs, and clinical community partnerships, the number of falls among seniors can be substantially reduced. So it's kind of, uh, again, it takes a village, but it also takes um, just uh, perseverance to maintain your strength, to maintain your active status as much as possible, and then also just to modify your environment, which is what we're going to talk about today. Many people think that as you get older, that you're just going to fall, that it's inevitable. But it, it is not an inevitable result of aging. It's not a normal part of aging. It can be prevented. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So things that you can do to age in place. I'm going to talk about five different areas of your home. Um, obviously, this isn't every area of your home. But we'll, I wanted to touch on these five most important areas. The entrances the stairs inside your home, the kitchen, the bathrooms, and the bedrooms. What I would like for you to do right now is imagine the layout of your own home and or the layout of an older loved one um, that you're concerned about making sure that uh, they're safe at home. So let's start with the entrances. So I want you to think about the front door, the back door, a garage entrance, any entrance that will be used really by anybody. Um, the first thing I want you to look at is, is there proper lighting? Um, that's really, really important to light up the walkway, to light up 
the entrance where you're needing to use your keys and things like that. As we get older, we all know that many of us, uh, our eyesight um, declines. Uh, many of us end up with macular degeneration. And so proper lighting is gonna be really important for your safety. Do you have stairs at any of these entrances? If you do, if you don't, that's great, that's perfect. If you don't, if you do have stairs, do you have railings there? Do you have grab bars there? Anything to hold on to, preferably on both sides. Many times when we are using entrances, we're carrying things. So it's really important to be able to hold on, especially as we get older and arthritis might set in and things like that. Some people get ramps. If you, let's say you use a rolling walker or you use a wheelchair, a ramp really comes in handy. It's safer and easier to use in order to get into your home or out of your home. And there's also something called a vertical platform lift where you just maybe roll onto the platform with your walker or with your wheelchair, push a button and it'll take you up or down those few stairs at your entrance. One other thing that's really important is to make sure that the walkway from your exit to your home, to your car and back is even and uncluttered. So let's say in out your front door, you have a cobblestone walkway. That's pretty uneven. Those are a little scary to walk on. So either you could just say, okay, I'm not gonna use that exit. I'm gonna use the other exit or you can use, um, or you can replace the cobblestone with a even concrete sidewalk. Of course, that does take money, so that has to be taken into consideration. And also just unclutter. Uh, that is such a simple thing to do, but many of us, like I said, when you're living in your home for years and years, uh, you don't notice that there's clutter and that the clutter can be unsafe. So like when you're walking out Let's say you have a garage exit and there's boxes everywhere. Just, just have someone help you move all of that out of your way so you have a nice clear walkway. If you need physical assistance, definitely get it. You don't wanna be too proud uh, if you need physical assistance because if you have a fall, then you're gonna need even more physical assistance. So make sure to get that if you need it. And then uh, the door handle and the lock. Do you have issues uh, with that? Is the handle a knob and it's very difficult for you to use? You can always replace that with a lever handle. Uh, some people have a hard time with the lock. And if you have difficulty standing for any period of time, that could make it an unsafe situation. So there are uh, locks that are easier. There's even smart locks uh, where you can push a button on your phone and unlock your door. All kinds of neat ideas. Um, let's think about the stairs inside your home. Uh, stairs going down to your basement, stairs going upstairs to your second level. Uh, do you have railings at those stairs? Preferably a railing on each side. Uh, first of all, if you have a railing, is it secure? You would not believe how many homes I go into um, and I go to test the railing and it's so loose, which can be disastrous if it were to come out of the wall. Uh, so check your railings, add a railing on the other side if you can do that. The beauty of that is that the person that's using those stairs um, has, it's gonna increase their independence using the stairs, it's gonna increase their safety using the stairs, um, and then it will allow them to use the stairs more often, which will increase their strength. So it's, it's a great thing to do the, two railings on one railing on each side. Proper lighting again, that's gonna be a common thread. Um, you wanna make sure you have proper lighting at the stairwell, always turn on the light when you're using the stairwell. Non-slip flooring, many people have rugs on their stairs and if that rug has been there for years and years, it can get worn down and really slippery. So pay attention to that, if it's slippery, uh, definitely make a change, it's worth it. It's worth the investment. Low pile uh, rugs are the best. Berber is great for steps. If you have a slippery hardwood, 
um, you might want to replace it with something that's more textured. And then also think about what you're wearing on your feet when you're using the stairs. Uh, the non-slip socks are nice. Um, and then just shoes is, is really important. Some people end up using what's called a stair glide uh, at their stairs. And what that is, is that you will sit in a chair, push a button, and it'll take you up the stairs or down the stairs. So you don't actually have to navigate those stairs. Stair glides are expensive, but again, you may want to consider making that investment versus having to move out of your home to a home that doesn't have stairs. Physical assistance, if you need that, definitely get it. And if you are unsafe to use those stairs, just don't use them, if that's at all possible. Um, many of my clients have rearranged their homes, so instead of their bedroom being on the second floor, they create their bedroom, let's say, in what used to be their living room. Do whatever you have to do to make it so that you're safe and functional in your own home. The next area we'll talk about is the kitchen. Um, proper lighting again, common thread here, non-slip flooring and secure rugs. Um, I would say every single home that I've gone in has area rugs. Usually it's an occupational therapist 101 uh, to automatically tell people get rid of those area rugs because they are a slipping and tripping hazard. With me, if that rug is not a high pile rug, which means it's not gonna be kind of a higher surface than a regular floor, and if it's secure and there's a reason for that rug, so let's say a mat when you first walk into the house or a mat by the kitchen sink, then I'm okay with that as long as it's non-slip. If you can put your foot on that rug and move it with your foot, it's too slippery. So get one that has the rubberized um, bottom to it, or you can get those uh, things that you can attach underneath the rug to make sure that it doesn't slip and doesn't buckle. You wanna make sure it doesn't buckle. In the kitchen, make sure that it's uncluttered. Only keep the daily use items within easy reach and anything that you don't absolutely need uh, every single day, put it away in a cabinet, preferably in a cabinet that you can reach it easily when you do need to use it. I do not recommend using step stools. If you can avoid it at all costs, avoid it. Um, I'm just not crazy about step stools. If you have something that you wanna use once a year, you're making turkey for Thanksgiving and you need that big roasting pan, have someone who is more uh, steady on their feet reach it for you. And then the stoves with the controls in the front, they are a great thing because that way you're not reaching over potentially hot burners to reach the controls of the stove. Um, there are a ton of other ideas for the kitchen that we don't have time for today, but there's lots of smart appliances uh, and other um, tips and tricks in the kitchen to keep you as independent and as safe as possible. The bathrooms, I want you to think about your half bathrooms and your full bathrooms. The bathroom is the room in the house that the most falls occur. And we all can guess that it's because there's water everywhere in the bathroom. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the height of your toilet. Um, in the older homes, many times the toilets are really, really low. Um, and so it's, it's more difficult as we get older uh, we have stiffer joints, and so it's more difficult to sit down on a low toilet and to stand up from a low toilet. So you want to make sure um, that the toilet height is appropriate for you. They do have toilets now that are called comfort height toilets. You can find them in Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, the toilet itself is a few inches higher, and uh, so you can replace that toilet, or you can get uh, and or you can get grab bars next to the toilet to help when you want to sit down and stand up. Um, there's also other durable medical equipment that can help with that, such as an elevated toilet seat with arms. Uh, another important thing in the bathroom is proper seating. Um, if, you, if you shower 
in a shower, obviously, um, then you want to have a shower chair or a bench if you have difficulty standing for periods of time. The more tired you are or um, weak you are, the more chances you have of falling. So we really want to keep a chair there if and when necessary. Uh, easy, safe access for bathing. Do you bathe in a tub shower? Do you bathe in just a tub, in, in a bathtub? Um, obviously, the most safe situation would be a walk-in shower because you don't have to lift your leg and your hip up to go over into the tub. Um, grab bars are really important, and I'll show you some pictures in, in a little bit of some of my uh, clients' homes that they modified with that. And then safe flooring. Uh, in a bathroom, uh, especially in old bathrooms, old tile can be very slippery. Nowadays, they have um, like a textured tile that is water resistant, uh, and it's great. It's beautiful, and um, it's you slip on it less, um, and it's just a great thing to have. And your bedroom. Um, so I want you to think about, it. do you get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom? Think about that. Um, one thing that's really, really important is to make sure that any walkways from your bed to the bathroom is decluttered. In my particular house, I have a Chesapeake Bay Retriever and he has about 50 toys. Uh, every night I need to make sure that those toys are put, put away because when I get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, I really don't want to be tripping on a dog toy. Uh, the other thing that's really important is lighting. If you have um, proper lighting in your bedroom at night and that you can see to go into the bathroom, that's really important. Or you can also get the motion activated night lights um, and they really come in handy. If you feel like you, if it's too unsafe for you to get up and actually walk into the bathroom or a loved one, um, consider getting a bedside commode for nighttime bathroom trips. That way, all you have to do is stand up, pivot, and use the bedside commode at night, and you're safe and you're not falling. For a gentleman, uh, having a urinal on their nightstand is helpful as well. Safe flooring. Again, uh, you want to make sure that uh, your carpet is not slippery, uh, or if you have hardwood flooring, things like that. And then in your bedroom, you tend to do most of your dressing, grooming, uh, things like that. Using adaptive equipment really comes in handy uh, to increase your independence, which when you're more independent, that increases your safety. So there is things, there are things that can help you with getting dressed to help you be more independent, such as a reacher, a sock aid, long handle shoehorns, uh, the list goes on and on. So this is, these are pictures of uh, one of my client's bathrooms. I have a client, uh, it's a husband and wife. They have lived in their home since the 70s. And the, they're both in their 70s as well. Um, the husband, uh, had his bedroom is the master bedroom. And the bathroom that you see to the left was his half bathroom that was off of his bedroom. What he was doing was he was using the stairs to go down to the basement to a walk-in shower when he bathed. Unfortunately, he uh, has had a recent diagnosis of Parkinson's. He's doing really well right now, but he does have good days and bad days. And so instead of having him use those stairs down to the basement every day to, to bathe, we decided to add a walk-in shower to this half bath off of his master bed, bedroom. Uh, as you can see, uh, this walk-in shower has lots of grab bars. Um, he can put in a shower chair if and when he needs one. Right now, he doesn't feel like he needs one. Uh, he's got the handheld shower, which is nice. And then as you can see, by the toilet, he has a pull-down grab bar as well if he needs help getting up off the toilet. So it's a beautiful thing. Now, 
Uh, he can bathe in the shower upstairs, doesn't absolutely have to use those basement stairs. And this is his wife's bathroom. She has uh, arthritis in her knees and it was difficult for her to uh, step into the tub every time she needed to take a shower. So we decided to also put in a walk-in shower in her bathroom. And as you can see, there are grab bars. Again, there's room for a shower chair if and when she needs it. Um, and honestly, I feel like it's a beautiful shower. She, uh, it was important to her for it to be pretty. Um, and she really liked the oil rubbed bronze finish. And so we were able to get grab bars and a shower head and all of that good stuff that matched. If you look at the toilet, you can see the toilet is a little bit higher, um, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, and then the flooring, uh, as you can see, it looks like hardwood, but that is that textured flooring uh, that is water resistant that's made for the bathroom. So she's really, really happy with hers. Okay, so bottom line, what is the moral of this story? I have given you some general, very general tips on making sure that your house is set up safely as you get older. Um, with my clients, every single client is different. Everybody has different physical and cognitive issues that um, would play into how they need to modify their home. They all, everybody has their own goals as well. Um, but one thing I wanted to talk about is that it's really important to be proactive versus reactive. Many, many people uh, wait until they absolutely have to um, modify their home. And think about today, uh, uh, remodelers are really hard to find right now. They're extremely busy. Um, and so if you needed to remodel your home, due to a crisis situation, it may be difficult to do that. So planning ahead is really important. In my mind, as an occupational therapist, where there's a will, there's always a way. Um, now, you know, there's some people who absolutely need nursing home care, 24 seven nursing home care. Um, there's some people who absolutely need to go into an assisted living facility, um, but for the people who don't absolutely need that, there's almost always a way to adapt things so that you can be as independent and as safe as possible in your own home. Um, if you look at home modifications and a home safety assessment, which is what I do, uh, as an investment, as you would estate planning, um, I really believe that that's a great way of looking at it because it truly is an investment in your safety and in your home as well. Um, last thing, asking for help is totally okay. Uh, as we get older, it may not be as safe for us to clean our own home, uh, the heavy cleaning. It may not be possible for us to do that due to shoulder issues or you know, knee issues. Um, so if you're able to afford it, um, there's also um, other sources that you can get help with things like cutting your grass, cleaning your home, things like that. Take advantage of that. Um, the handouts that I have included in this presentation uh, includes really good articles about aging in place, but um, there's also a document that I put together um, on potential funding resources for modifying your home. There's tax credits that you can take advantage of. Uh, some of these funding resources are local to my area, but there's many that are national. Um, and so I, I would encourage you to really take a look at that. And I am open for any questions that you have. Here are some places that you can find me at, my email address, my phone number, my website. And then uh, we have a Facebook group for people who are local to the Frederick, Maryland area, uh, aging in place in Frederick County, resources and support. We have about 600 people in that group on Facebook, and it's a great group to exchange ideas, to get support, and to get resources. Yeah, excellent, Terry. That is a really good Facebook group. Um, if you wouldn't mind, for those that will be listening on the podcast later, can you spell out 
your, uh, your, your first name and your phone number for those that will be listening. Sure. Uh, my first name is Terry, T-E-R-R-I, last name Lemire, L-E-M-E-R-E, -E -E, and my phone number is 301-857-7343. Okay, and so the email is terry at healthyhomelivingsolutions.com, the website healthyhomelivingsolutions.com. Yep. Very good. Um. We, we only have time for uh, one question. So uh, for some of us that have asked questions, if you want to reach out to Terry directly, um, I want to talk a little bit about the decision-making progress, uh, decision-making process. You mentioned mm -hmm. the home modification. Um, who all should be involved in that as far as family members, occupational therapists, um, the remodelers or the contractors? I want to make sure, like you said, that Every, the best interest of the individual that's going to be living in the home and their family. So who are all the parties that should be involved in this process? Like I was talking about earlier, it really does take a village. And that's a great, great question. Um, usually, I would say half of my clients who reach out to me are adult children of their parents who are they're concerned about. Uh, and then the other half are the people who are interested in aging in place and uh, planning ahead. Um, but it's it's a really great situation when you can have your adult children involved as well, especially if they are supportive anyway in your life. Um, and then uh, I actually have partnered up with a local remodeler uh, who is familiar with aging in place features, and he did um, that job that the pictures that I showed you. So having a go-to remodeler is great. Um, if you have a huge project um, and you have uh, financial means, then an architect can come into play, um, um, even like a estate planner, things like that. Um, just everybody can come together to put that whole plan into place of my environment, my finances, my potential caregiving if I need a paid caregiver, things like that. So Very good. It, it just all depends on the client and what their situation is. Absolutely. Well, once again, uh, Terry, thank you so much. A lot to take in today, um, a lot to think about. Um, and so hopefully people can reach out to you or somebody in their locale um, if they have any direct questions, if they're not in Maryland. Um, as yeah. far as knowledgeable aging, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to say, if you're not in Maryland, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me also and I might be able to point you in the direction of someone in your area that can do what I do. So. Yeah, and as you know, you are a, a recent uh, certing, sort of a CAP specialist, a certing, certified aging in place specialist. So I'm sure there's a network of professionals across the United. I know there's a network of professionals, um, people who do a wonderful job like yourself and others. Yes, there is, thank you. Yep, um, as far as Knowledgeable Aging, you can go to our website, knowledgeableaging.com and see all of our upcoming and archive converse, oh, webinars. Go to YouTube, type in Knowledgeable Aging, we ask you to uh, subscribe. If podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Apple Tunes, Spotify, et cetera. Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar, and this is Knowledgeable Aging. Mm -hmm.